so today we will uh, look at a different kind of a solution to the extended grites problem so the original grites problem was uh, done as i said for the case of a plug flow with a constant wall temperature and uh, that was extended later by sellars to a parabolic velocity profile and we also saw the solution to that uh, so now we will quickly visit the last of uh, the extensions that is with a constant wall flux boundary condition okay so we'll uh, look at the extended so so this is of course the greats problem for the thermally bound, uh, developing region for the constant wall flux boundary condition either it can be with a plug flow velocity profile or a parabolic flow velocity profile if you take the case of a, uh, for example a plug flow kind of a velocity profile uh, you start with your uh, energy equation u dt by dx is equal to alpha into 1 by r into uh, d by dr of r dt by dr okay so <clears throat> so this is your uh, basic energy equation let us uh, uh, what we will do here is we will not uh, try to non dimensionalize the temperature because we have a constant wall flux condition and therefore and any attempt to kind of define a non dimensional temperature will be futile because if you define your theta something like t minus t wall by t i minus t wall so there it was useful when, when you had a constant wall temperature okay so you could take this out of the differential and it will cancel off but in this case your uh, wall temperature is a function of x so therefore you cannot define your non dimensional temperature this way so it is better to keep it in the dimensional form okay and then try to solve so what we will do however is to non dimensionalize the coordinates for x and r okay so we will write that in terms of zeta and so we will define zeta as x by r naught divided by Peclé number and my non dimensional r is eta which is r by r naught so if you substitute this into the given equation energy equation so you get u uh, <coughs> dt by d zeta so so from here you can write your x as uh, uh, xi zeta into uh, r naught into peclé number now peclé number is nothing but rho into um into d by or you can say um d by alpha okay so this i can substitute in place of uh, x so this becomes uh, r naught um d and the alpha goes to the numerator here so this is equal to alpha 1 by <coughs> eta uh, into d by d eta into eta dt by d eta of course the r naught here and here cancel so i have a r naught square which i have to multiply it outside so my alpha cancels here and I can also cancel off my R naught. So this I can write write as two two times R naught. So this becomes R naught square, which also cancels off, and therefore I get uh, uh, U by U M into one by two D T by D zeta which is equal to 1 by eta d by d eta into eta into dt by d eta okay now come now comes the velocity profile which you want to use if you want to use a, a fully developed parabolic velocity profile then you substitute for the appropriate relation so you know that u by what is the fully developed profile u by um is equal to twice 1 minus 
eta square in terms of the non dimensional coordinate so directly you can substitute for u by 2i cum directly as 1 minus eta square here if you want to go for a parabolic flow okay however if you want to go with the classical how Greit started with a plug flow then you can say that your u is equal to um so this is for a parabolic profile and this is your plug flow or slug flow whatever you want to so therefore let us assume for the time being that yours is a plug flow so substituting this you get dt by d zeta is equal to twice of 1 by eta into d by d eta eta dt by d eta okay so this is how your energy equation can be written and now we have to state the boundary conditions okay so now if you substitute the parabolic flow you have 1 minus eta square here okay 2 2 cancels off you have 1 minus eta square so till here it is fine so now we have to state the boundary conditions for the constant wall flux case okay so t corresponding to zeta equal to 0 and any value of eta hmm? ti and coming to the boundary conditions with respect to eta here you have a constant wall flux at r equal to r naught so therefore you should rather write dt by dr or dt by d eta at eta equal to 1 is equal to q of wall by k this is your condition okay so this is your uh, wall flux which is k dt by dr at eta r equal to r naught which is basically dt by d, d eta at eta equal to 1 so this is a constant and what is the other boundary condition at eta equal to 0 t should be finite or dt by d eta at eta equal to 0 should be 0 so this implies symmetry in the profile okay or this also is equivalent to saying t at eta equal to 0 should be finite okay so now you see the problem so you want to define an Eigen value problem here however the direction of the Eigen value problem you have a non homogeneous boundary condition so therefore the question is how will you convert this into a Eigen value problem okay so here is where we introduce a particular technique to do that I have posted uh, the solution for a constant wall flux but in a Cartesian coordinate that is for a channel flow on the Moodle I have worked out the solution and I have posted it you can just go through it and a very similar treatment has to be done for the pipe flow case also just I will give you the overview uh, I think after that you can go through the document and it is very straightforward process okay so what I am going to do is I am going to now introduce uh, theta here which is of course not non dimensional but I will say this as t minus t i okay so therefore I can replace this since t i is a constant okay that is the inlet temperature so I can replace this t with theta and the condition here becomes at zeta equal to 1 zeta equal to 0 theta will be 1 0 t will become t i okay so that is the advantage so what I am trying to do is wherever possible I can introduce zeros I am doing it and then this will this will be in terms of theta this will also be in terms of theta anyway t i is a constant so if you differentiate it does not matter now I am going to assume that theta of x comma y can be written as independent solutions or sorry here it is x comma or zeta comma eta can be written as 
some capital X which is a function of zeta plus phi which is a function of only eta plus a perturbation which is a function of both zeta and eta. So see now the this assumption works well because this is a linear operator the equation is linear and therefore if you assume a linear combination of solutions that should also be a solution okay. So you are assuming that your actual solution consists of two independent summation of two independent solutions one which is only a function of uh, zeta the other which is only a function of eta and of course you know this is just an assumption on top of it the actual solution can be at, uh, obtained if you have a perturbation to this and that perturbation is you call it as xi which is of course the perturbation has to be a function of eta and zeta. So that brings out the interaction between the eta and zeta terms okay whereas this purely talks about an ordinary differential equation separately and ordinary differential equation separately and this is a mixed solution okay. So this is uh, this is basically independent solutions. in terms of eta and zeta and this is the perturbation to the independent solutions and since the part partial differential equation is linear and the solution is a linear superposition of all the solutions still this will be a solution to the governing equation. So now you see the advantage so once you substitute this into the governing equation okay so you can write this as uh, you can separate this into uh, two problems one where you first look at only the independent solution and the other where you look at the perturbation solution to the perturbation and then finally add everything together. So first, first part will be the solution to independent variables okay. So first what I say is that I have a problem now I can substitute x of xi and phi of eta separately and it will satisfy this such a way that you should have uh, you have dx by d zeta equal to twice 1 by eta into d by d eta into eta phi d phi by d eta okay. So you first assume that your independent variables satisfy this governing equation so you write in terms of the independent variable so you get this as terms of x this in terms of phi and this two can be equal if only they are equal to some constant okay. So then you can find this is a ordinary differential equal this is a ordinary differential equation this is a first order second order of OD directly you can integrate and write the solutions for phi and x okay. So therefore you have two independent solutions and the boundary conditions for this particular problem in terms of x you assume that x corresponding to zeta equal to 0 is equal to 0 okay and corresponding to phi you assume that your d phi by d eta at eta equal to 1 is equal to q all by k and the other boundary condition is your d phi by d eta at eta equal to 0 is equal to 0 okay. So you apply these two boundary conditions to this now you get, get the point why I have written it that way. So once the non-homogeneous boundary condition goes to this the remaining part which is the perturbation will have a homogeneous boundary condition okay because once I have found the solutions to the independent variables the solution with respect to phi will take the non-homogeneous boundary condition now therefore the second part will be the solution to the perturbation
the second part will be solution to the perturbation here. So, if I write the equation for the perturbation I can just uh, give the boundary conditions. So, the boundary conditions for say can be written as theta minus x minus phi of theta okay. So, now corresponding to this fact of course uh, when I when I look at d psi by d eta at eta equal to 1 okay. So, this will be d theta by d eta at eta equal to 1 minus d phi by d eta at eta equal to 1. So, both will cancel off. So, therefore, this will be 0 because your d theta by d eta is what q all by k and also d phi by d eta at eta equal to 1 you have forced it to be q all by k. So, therefore, the boundary condition one of them becomes 0 directly and the other boundary condition d psi by d eta at eta equal to 0 anyway both are 0 so that will also be 0. Okay. So, now, now you see that you have reduced your non homogeneous uh, boundary conditions to the to uh, you are now solving actually for the perturbation which has now homogeneous boundary conditions and now this perturbation psi can again be solved by separation of variables. Okay. So, now you can say that I can assume that my psi zeta comma eta is actually uh, some x of zeta and some y of eta and then I can proceed with my I can I can now proceed with my regular solution okay. So, what is the remaining boundary condition that is at x at zeta equal to 0. So, therefore, at zeta equal to 0 your psi at zeta equal to 0 comma eta will be theta at zeta equal to 0 which is 0 minus x of 0 which is again 0 minus you have phi of eta. So, therefore, the boundary condition at eta equal to 0 becomes minus phi of eta okay. So, these are the boundary conditions. So, you have the boundary condition at psi equal to 0 then with respect to eta you have two homogeneous boundary conditions. So, therefore, if you substitute into this you separate the variables. So, in terms of y you will get the Eigen value problem okay. So, and that will have two homogeneous boundary conditions. Okay, any guess what will what the Eigen value problem will be here? Will that be a Bessel equation? It will be a Bessel equation and you already know the solution to Bessel equations. You have to just combine the Bessel solutions and then you now the only difference between this and the constant wall temperature case there the temperature was 0 at r equal to r naught here you have both gradient 0 boundary conditions okay. So, this is this is the difference and after that the solution is straight forward. So, this is an independent solution that you will get from separation of variables and you already have the solution for x and phi which is a straight forward p d to integrate and then finally, you superpose all the three solutions and you get the final solution for theta okay. So, this procedure I have very clearly illustrated in that example for Cartesian coordinate system you please go through that and in the assignment I will ask you to do the parallel thing for the duct flow also okay. So, only thing there you have cosine and sin here you will be getting in terms of Bessel functions. So, the final solution that comes out uh, it was done by Sellars and uh, 
Sellers did both the case of uh, the case where you have a plug flow as well as the case where you have a parabolic flow. In the case of parabolic flow, you have 1 minus eta square which is coming here. Okay. When you substitute for the velocity profile, you have 1 minus eta square and there is no 2 here. And therefore, the eigenvalue problem in this case will be what? <coughs> Sturm Liouville. Okay, the Sturm Liouville kind of a problem. So Sellers did this, and the final solution for Nusselt number eleven by forty-eight plus Okay, so this r prime here is basically the uh, gradient of the Eigen function, which, which, which is basically the Eigen function comes from the solution of the Sturm Liouville problem. Okay, and uh, these are coefficients for different values of n. Okay, so this is beta n. Now he tabulated the values of uh, beta n and r prime beta n. So this is the case for parabolic velocity profile. So this is the solution by Sellard et al. Okay, so for different values of n, beta n square minus r prime minus beta n square. Okay, so n one, two, three. The values go as twenty five point six three nine, eighty four point six two four, and one seventy six. Point four, eight point eight five four, minus three, two point zero six two, okay. So, therefore, this is what he has done. Now, uh, you can check for large values of zeta okay so nu large values from this table you substitute and calculate what should be the nu for large values of zeta so if you assume large values of zeta you can say that this is an exponentially decaying function goes to zero the entire term will be very small it will be simply 48 by 11 which is Exactly four point three six four. Huh? Just check that. That come to four point three six four. Anyone has a calculator can? Huh? Okay. So what was so? So do you remember this number? This was the case there where we proved very first for a fully developed both hydrodynamically and thermally and for a constant wall flux condition this was the Nusselt number so now this is coming as an asymptotic solution uh, to to the Sellers pro, uh, solution okay okay so so these are the things and of course the Sellers also did a case with uh, uh, where he did a constant uh, linear temperature wall temperature variation okay so he did all the three uh, so he looked at the parabolic velocity profile and he looked at uh, constant wall flux condition and also linear variation in the wall temperature and he has also given the solution I am not going to give that otherwise it becomes too many correlations uh, so he has done all the three so I am just going to plot the variation of the local Nusselt number with all the three different boundary conditions as a function of x by uh, r naught by Peclet number or x by you can plot it as d naught which is 1 by Greit's number okay so
okay so he has done for three different boundary conditions constant wall flux and linear wall temperature variation which was something like t wall is t i plus some zeta constant time zeta this was the linear wall temperature variation and of course your constant wall temperature so now i have marked here 1 2 3 so you have to tell me which one corresponds to 1 okay let us start with 3 out of these 3 which one do you think will be corresponding to number 3 which boundary condition t wall is constant so that is number 3 so between 1 and 2 what could be number 1 huh? q wall is constant how about uh, linear variation of wall temperature okay so finally whether it is linear variation of wall temperature or q wall is a constant one it bec once it becomes both thermally and hydrodynamically fully developed they reach the same value okay that is why these two merge and you see the corresponding value is 4.3 and for the wall temperature you have 3.6 can you explain why why the two cases give the same value That, that would be same as t correct, wall as correct exactly so when you say q wall is constant in the fully developed case we have shown that the wall temperature varies linearly okay so therefore it should approach the first case where your wall temperature is vary, varying linearly throughout okay so therefore the two nusselt numbers will have to be the same in the completely fully developed region okay so i think this brings to conclusion all our uh, analytical solutions as far as the internal flow is concerned and uh, the last part today which uh, i would like to with which I, I would like to conclude the analytical solutions will be the region 1 that is simultaneous developing or simultaneous entry length so this is your region in the duct where your hydrodynamic boundary layer is developing your thermal boundary layer is also developing okay so this is your region 1 okay where both are developing so that is why it is called simultaneously developing or simultaneous entry length now this is a really tough problem okay so you cannot make any assumption to the velocity profiles so what the only solution to this is to solve the, the momentum equations and get the velocity profile simultaneously and the velocity profile will not be a constant it will also be changing with respect to x okay this is a very difficult problem and uh, therefore if you want to solve the complete equations uh, so you have to solve the complete navier stokes equations now there are some uh, approximations made to the solution if you say for a circular tube with axisymmetric assumption okay so that you neglect your variation with respect to the theta direction so that is your axisymmetric assumption you can write your uh, momentum equation in the axial direction that is rho u du by dx plus rho v r 
into du by dr will be equal to minus dp by dx plus 1 by r d by dr into r u into du by dr. So this equation which we have written right here okay so this assumes that there is no variation of velocity with respect to theta direction and also the the radial momentum is also negligible okay so therefore you write only the axial momentum equation neglecting the uh, variation with respect to the theta direction and this equation is very similar to your boundary layer equation in fact this is your boundary layer equation right. So this is your boundary layer assumption remember in the flat plate case we had the same thing u du by dx plus v du by dy is equal to if you have a pressure gradient you have 1 by rho dp by dx plus nu d, uh, nu d square u by d, dy square the same way we have constructed the boundary layer equation in the radial coordinate system okay. So this is an assumption to the actual problem because what you are doing here you are neglecting d square u by dx square okay so that could be important okay because if you look at the acceleration acceleration in the x direction is important and also the higher order derivative d square u by dx square also becomes important which you are neglecting here and also it sometimes since it is three dimensional you could also have three dimensional effects if you have a non circular cross section okay so these are also not taken into account so in fact but you can still get some kind of an approximate solution if you solve this equation for the velocity profile and but this boundary layer uh, assumption is valid only when you have close to the entry length if you move far away once again once the two boundary layers start to merge then the boundary layer assumption will not be valid anymore okay so so this is this is what uh, comes out of it but uh, there was a person called uh, langar by the name langar what he did was he even neglected the effect of radial velocity that means the neglected this term straight away okay the big assumption and then he took only the axial velocity variation into account with respect to x and r he solved this equation numerically and so the resulting equation which he solved was rho u du by dx equal to minus dp by dx 1 by r into d by dr into mu du by dr so the boundary conditions that he solved at x is equal to 0 u is equal to ui so you had some inlet uh, velocity which is a constant okay so when it approaches the entrance of the tube you have a inlet velocity which is constant and corresponding to r equal to r naught you have u equal to 0 no slip boundary condition and at r equal to 0 the profile has to be symmetric du by dr at r equal to 0 has to be 0 okay so he solved this numerically of course you cannot find a close form analytical solution because of all these uh, uh, terms right here and uh, he got a velocity distribution which was in terms of Bessel functions okay so these are the Bessel function of uh, the 0th order and this is the second order Bessel function the first kind Bessel function of the first kind 0th order first kind second order okay so here gamma is ba uh, basically uh, some psi into it is a function of x by d by Reynolds number okay and your eta was r by r naught <coughs> so this 
So, so this was his velocity profile. This is also called as Langer velocity profile. So you see now the velocity profile is a function of x by d through the gamma as well as it is a function of eta okay. So this is the approximate profile that Langer got by the numerical solution to this equation and with the following boundary conditions of course he neglected lot of things here huh? so he neglected the radial velocity and things like that. So this is not a very good assumption when you go too close to x is equal to 0 because here you have strong radial components of velocity which are in training okay so so this is slightly uh, this is valid in somewhere intermediate somewhere maybe from here to here okay but nevertheless it is a reasonable assumption so using this profile now you can substitute this into the energy equation so energy equation can also be solved numerically so of course you have your energy equation as u by uh, um into d theta by dx um, equal to d square theta by d eta square plus 1 by eta into d theta by d eta yeah there should be a 2 here if I define my x as uh, x by r not by Peclet number okay so now this u by um you can substitute from the Langer velocity profile okay and once again now your velocity profile is a function of both your x and y or your zeta and eta okay therefore uh, okay so I can use the conventional variables which I used before I will call this as zeta just to avoid confusion okay so this cannot be again analytically solved because your velocity profile again is not only a function of eta but it is also a function of zeta so therefore this again has to be solved numerically with boundary conditions whether it is constant wall temperature or constant wall flux and you get the solution for the temperature and of course the final Nusselt number okay so so the solution to this uh, equation was numerically done by it was numerically integrated by case okay for different boundary conditions and we will find the solution to all of that one by one. okay he is the same case who wrote the book case in Crawford so at Stanford University okay so there are a lot of uh, solutions to basic fundamental heat transfer problems in 1950s and 60s which were done by uh, 50s, 60s, 70s which were done by case uh, and what happened was he found out of course uh, solutions but uh, this the person Hausen okay so he comes to our rescue as we saw already that wherever there is a very complicated solution in terms of Bessel functions or sturm Liouville Eigen functions this fellow Hausen uh, was kind enough to do an empirical curve fitting and then give a more easier solutions in terms of only Greit's number okay so Hausen came and uh, he took the profiles uh, which were obtained by case and then we finally cast them into a simpler form for different boundary conditions okay so the first case was the constant wall temperature so all these were from using the Langer velocity profiles okay so still they are not the most accurate but reasonable so the Nusselt number variation was expressed as 3.66 plus 0.104 re pr by x by d which is nothing but Greit's number okay so you can write this as directly 
grades number divided by 1 plus 0 0.016 into grades number to the power 0 0.8 and constant heat flux case so you see the limiting case where your grades number goes to 0 for large values of zeta so it goes to the fully developed okay so 4.36 plus 0 0.036 into grades number divided by 1 plus 0 0.0011 grades number or 0 0.8 and finally for the uh, he also did for constant temperature difference okay the constant temperature difference is uh, basically defined as T wall minus T m is constant okay so for this he got 4.36 plus uh, 0 0.036 grades number uh, sorry 0 0.1 0 0.1 into grades number divided by 1 plus 0 0.016 grades number to the power 0 0.8 okay so constant temperature difference the simplest profile that you can think of where you can have a constant uh, temperature difference is uh, if you have a linear wall temperature variation okay so that is one case uh, which where you can think about this and finally both the Nusselt numbers go to the same asymptotic limits so these were the simplified solutions by Hausen and uh, of course these are correlations which are much easier to work than, than the exact solutions or the numerical solutions which were obtained using the Langer's velocity profile so just to summarize I do not want to now uh, talk too much about uh, how these solutions came because they are all numerical solutions and nowadays the more prudent way of uh, doing this is to solve the complete partial differential equation using comp computational fluid dynamics and directly get the most accurate solution okay rather than putting so much of effort into finding the numerical solution to this approximate uh, equations okay so as far as thermally uh, uh, developing profile has uh, with fully hydrodynamically developed profile is concerned we can straight get reasonably straightforward uh, solutions analytically but simultaneously developing profiles are much difficult and therefore we need to go for numerical solutions so on a concluding note I will just summarize whatever solutions we developed analytically okay uh, if you look at the analytical solution to the problems uh, first is the geometry or the configuration and velocity profile and the corresponding eigenvalue problem or I will say eigen function. in fact I can also introduce boundary conditions so this is for region 2 so hydrodynamically fully developed and thermally developing so now look at the uh, constant wall temperature and if you look the case of uh, channel flow that is in Cartesian coordinate system and if you assume a slug flow or a plug flow temp velocity profile the Eigen functions will be in terms of sines and cosines okay when it comes to uh, constant wall flux the same thing 
and slug flow. Huh? What, what is that? What will be the Eigen function? Still it will be the same. Only thing you have to go by this approach whatever I described. Break up into two independent solutions and a perturbation. The perturbation solution will still be homogeneous. Homogeneous with a slug flow will be still sines and cosines. Now T wall is constant or Q wall is constant channel flow but a parabolic or fully developed velocity profile. What will be the Eigen function? Huh? What is that? What, what function? Bessel function. In a Cartesian coordinate system you do not get a Bessel equation. Hmm? Okay. And when it comes to uh, T wall is constant or <coughs> Q wall is constant but for pipe flow with a circular cross section okay I will say circular cross section if you have slug flow what will be the Eigen function Bessel okay. And the same boundary conditions circular duct and if you have parabolic fully developed then it will be terminal. So please take note of this. So when you solve any kind of problem whether it is a channel flow or pipe flow depending on the boundary conditions depending on the velocity profile this you may alternate between either of these kind of equations okay. So one more last table and with that so therefore to summarize all the solutions for fully developed case that is region 3 and thermally fully developed. So this is all for laminar flow till now okay and when Professor Kolar comes he will start looking at solutions to turbulent flow. So geometry, velocity profile, wall condition and the corresponding fully developed SL number okay we will start with a parallel plate. with a parabolic profile and Q wall is constant the value is 8.23 parallel plate parabolic and T wall is constant 7.60 next circular tube slug flow and Q wall that is 8.0 circular tube and then you have slug flow T wall that is 5.75 circular tube but parabolic and then you have Q wall you have 4.36 circular tube parabolic T wall 3.66. Similarly for triangular cross section, triangular duct if you have a parabolic velocity profile you have Q wall then you have 3.00 triangular parabolic constant wall temperature you have 2.35. So this is the summary of uh, the region 3 results we have already done uh, circular tube completely 
more or less okay and parallel plate is much easier than this because you will not have any Bessel equation you will have straightforward uh, ordinary differential equation for which you can find sin and cosine functions then you can see the order in which the Nusselt number decreases so it is the highest for the parallel plate case and compared to the constant wall temperature constant wall flux has always a higher value of Nusselt number then comes your circular cross section okay your slug flow always has the highest Nusselt number rather than parabolic flow and your triangular cross section or non circular cross sections will have lower value of Nusselt numbers okay so this this is to summarize all the results so we will stop here and uh, tomorrow and uh, on Saturday the last two classes we will look at the approximate approximate methods the integral method to solving the thermally developing region.